All right, engineer. so in this video, we're gonna talk about the cerebral cortex, primarily focusing on the occipital lobe. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so now let's talk about the occipital lobe. So the occipital lobe, right, we have to understand first off its boundaries. What, how do we know where the occipital lobe starts and ends? So we have a couple different boundaries here. One of them, one of the boundaries um, of the occipital lobe is this structure right here, this sulcus. And what this sulcus does is, is it separates the occipital lobe from the parietal lobe, right? So this is our parietal lobe. And this sulcus is called the parieto occipital sulcus. What is this called? Parieto occipital sulcus. Okay, beautiful. The other thing that we have to talk about, the other boundary here is again, that boundary that we said is kind of imaginary. So remember we have this sulcus here called the lateral sulcus. But there's this little notch here, right? So there's this little notch, this little divot here. And this little divot is called the preoccipital notch. And if you imagine from this preoccipital notch, we draw an imaginary line moving towards the tip of the lateral sulcus that separates the occipital lobe from the corresponding temporal lobe, okay? And so this sulcus is, well, there's actually not a specific sulcus, it's based on this imaginary line coming from this area here, which is called the pre-occipital notch. All right, beautiful. Now there's two cortex, thank goodness, only two things that we have to cover within the occipital lobe. The first one is this uh, green structure. We actually wanna cover this one first because it's actually an order of the primary and then a, a corresponding association cortex. So this green area here, most posterior in the occipital lobe, is actually gonna be the primary visual cortex. So what is it called? It's called the primary visual cortex. And really, the simple function of this is just conscious awareness of visual stimuli, right? So conscious awareness of visual stimuli. That's really, honestly, it. Is it's involved with conscious awareness of, pro of the visual stimuli. The other area here is this blue area. And this blue area is located just a little bit anterior to the primary visual cortex. This is called your visual association cortex. So what is this blue one here called? This blue one here is called the visual association cortex. Now what I want you to remember is that the visual association cortex is involved with taking visual stimuli, right? So taking visual stimuli and basically applying meaning to that visual stimuli, okay? Applying an understanding of that visual stimuli, okay? And that is important because it basically can take something that we see, like a basketball, right? And that visual stimulus of the basketball will go to the primary visual cortex but then go to the visual association cortex, which helps us to do processes of, you know, looking at the color, looking at the shape, looking at the different angles of the object, looking at basically if it's in motion or if it's not in motion, and then helping us to identify or recognize that object. So it's also important for recognition of the visual stimuli. So meaning, understanding, and recognition of the visual stimuli. All right, beautiful. So that covers the basic components of the occipital lobe. Let's dive in a little bit more into the primary visual and visual association cortex. All right, so the primary visual cortex, we're gonna kind of talk about how that functions really in the most basic sense, right? Now, if you guys haven't already, we're not gonna go into all the detail of the visual pathway via the optic nerve and then to the lateral geniculate nucleus and all that stuff. If you guys want to know more about the visual pathway, visual fields, we have a video on that in our neurology playlist. Go watch that, because it'll talk about this in more detail. I want us to primarily focus on the function of this primary visual cortex. So let's, take, let's say you have an object here, right? So here's our object. Now, this object that we have here is a basketball, right? Now, when we look at a basketball, 
our primary visual cortex doesn't necessarily see a basketball. It just sees an image, right? And that image, when it hits the retina, obviously this image, okay, will hit the retina. And from the retina, it'll travel down the optic nerve, you know, via the optic chiasma. It will go to a nucleus in the thalamus called the lateral geniculate nucleus. And then eventually, it'll move to the occipital lobe. Now, some of the fibers, again, do cross. We're not going to talk about that right now. The whole point here is that this object, what we see as a basketball, again, we might not immediately, due to the primary visual cortex, recognize that this object is a basketball. All we know is that the visual stimuli from this object is going to be going to your primary visual cortex. So then what you'll know is you have conscious awareness okay, of this visual stimulus. And in this case that we're using for this example, it is the basketball, right? But again, we don't know yet that it's the basketball, okay? What happens is from this primary visual cortex, what will it do? It'll then take the information about this visual stimulus right now, right? Move here and then send that information to this cortex just around the same area here. What is this here, this blue cortex? That is our visual association cortex. So it'll take the visual stimulus from this object that we don't know is a basketball yet, receive it, and then go ahead and just act as the highway system to send it to the association cortex. What does the association cortex do? Let's come down and discuss that. All right, so now what are we gonna be talking about here? Again, we talked about the primary visual cortex above and then we started talking about um, the visual association cortex, but now we're gonna talk a little bit more in more detail about the visual association cortex. And again, this is relatively simple. This is a very straightforward. Again, we started off with you have an object, right? That you're visibly seeing, okay? That object will hit the retina, right? After it hits the retina, moves down the optic nerve via the thalamus, lateral geniculate nucleus, and then goes first to the primary visual cortex. So we have the image of the object in our actual occipital lobe, particularly the primary visual cortex. Then the primary visual cortex will send the information that we have from this object to the uh, visual association cortex. Then what the visual association cortex will do is it'll look, take this object that we have from the, our, um, our visual stimulus and it'll look at what's the color of the object? What's the size of the object, right? What is, uh, is the object moving, right? So is there any movement of the object or is the object not moving, right? And basically, when it looks at all of these things, and even more, kind of analyzing all of this, it takes this visual image that we just kind of associate as an object from the primary visual cortex, analyzes it in this way, right? So this is our analysis of it. So this is going to be our analysis of that object. This is our analysis. What it does is another function of this visual association cortex is it has uh, it stores recent memories, so past memories of what? These may be visual uh, experiences that you had in the past uh, of maybe similar objects. And so what it does is it compares with past memories. Okay, so past memories. And then by doing that, what do we do? So if we analyze all of these things about the object, compare this with past memories, maybe we've seen this object before, then what does it do? By the, comp the components of both of these, this leads to recognition. Recognition of the object, right? Recognition of the object. That is the function of the visual association cortex. Why is all of this important? Well, the reason why is if you develop a lesion, right, in the visual association cortex, right, you may be able to what? Let's follow this pathway. Your vision, right, from basically the retina is okay, 
the optic nerve is okay, maybe going via the thalamus and the large nuclei. Nucleus is okay, the primary visual cortex is okay, but here at the association cortex is where the damage is. So you may be able to see an object, right? Because everything up until this point is fine. You may visually see the object, but your ability to analyze and recognize that object is now gone because you've damaged the association cortex. What is this called when you may have normal vision and see the image, but not be able to recognize the image? This is called agnosia, visual agnosia. This is called visual agnosia. So again, that's why it's important for us to know how this visual association cortex work, because if we can't basically analyze and compare the image that we're seeing with past memories, we might not be able to recognize what that image is. So we may be able to see a basketball, but not be able to say, oh, that's a basketball. And that's called visual agnosia. Okay, so it's important to remember that. All right, Nizner, so in this video, we talk about the cerebral cortex, primarily focusing on the occipital lobe. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you learned a lot. And if you guys did, hit that like button, comment down in the comment section, and please subscribe. Also, down in the description box, we'll have links to our Facebook or Instagram. Go follow us on that. Also, links down there for our Patreon. If you guys are willing to donate, we would truly appreciate it. All right, engineers, as always, love you. Thank you. And until next time.